Hey, what's up guys? It's Leechy here, back here with a brand new video. I'm still working on the other channel video right now, it's almost halfway through editing. Let's just say I had a couple hiccups while editing it. But you're not here to hear about me, so let's hop right into the quick news. First up, you guys know who Kevin Conroy is, right? The famous voice behind the motherfucking Batman? Well, guess what? He came out the closet the other day. And for me, as a queer personally, I think it's pretty awesome that one of my favorite characters growing up is also a queer. I never really had that connection before. Normally when I hear about somebody's sexuality, I'm like, alright, good for you, pal. But when it comes to Kevin Conroy, he is such an icon when it comes to voice acting that it feels a little bit special to me as somebody who is in the LGBTQ community. But also in voice acting news, we have to get a little bit somber here. If you don't know, Billy Kamens has sadly passed away. And if you don't know Billy by name, you will surely recognize some of the characters that he plays. Literally, no matter how old you are, you have heard Billy Kamens. Characters like Ferdinand from Fire Emblem, Maruki from Persona 5, Josuke from the Jojo family, and he even voiced Ren, the Pokedex, in one of the latest installments of the Pokemon anime. And for those of you who might have this question, before Billy passed away, he actually was working on another game, once again voicing Ferdinand Von Eyer for the upcoming Fire Emblem Warriors 3 Hopes game. So with that being said, rest in peace, Billy. But hey, let's brighten the mood a little bit, yeah? For those people exclusively playing on the PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5, you guys can get an early access demo to Jojo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle R a little bit early. If you don't know, I'm hyped as hell for this game. I don't even think I told people that I pre-ordered this game because even though I haven't watched all of JoJo, I am such a die-hard 2D fighting game fan and also a fan of the JoJo fighting game that I think that this game, even if it doesn't have the most in-depth systems or it doesn't have like a whole lot of combos like Marvel 3, I still think that it's going to be a really good game that holds its own and might even see some tournament play. But sadly, I will not be able to play this deck demo because, uh, look, I sold my PlayStation 4 last year. Next up, the Suicide Boys are going on tour. Uh, now I'm just gonna shut the fuck up right then and there because people who listen to the Suicide Boys are really gatekeepy about, uh, listening to the Suicide Boys. And for a little bit more information, they're going on a United States tour to pretty much every state except for mine. So for that, the Suicide Boys can go fuck themselves. Next up, Spider-Man is getting mod support. Well, I know it's technically, it's, uh, it's a PC port right? But you already know. When it comes to PC, it's getting mods. Uh, something something Xbox, something something oh yeah, I forgot to mention, Persona's coming to PC, by the way. Not just like, the dancing games or whatever. Persona 3, Persona 4 Golden, and Persona 5 Royal are all coming to PC. How long until you think they add the, the you-know-what mod? Really depends on how fast they import the models to Blender. So that's enough of the quick news. And to start us off with the big news here, we have Cartoon Network not being Cartoon Cartoon Network. It, it's really weird to describe, right? Like, just imagine if Cartoon Network stopped trying to compete with Disney XD and tried to compete with Disney Channel. Yeah, they're trying to go live action. So there's an interview with the Warner Bros. exec. Look, I don't really mean to digress, but I had to look up this chick, right? Amy Friedman, right? I had to look her up on Google, right? Because I was listening to this interview, right? And she's got a thickest, and I mean the thickest, Midwestern accents you've ever heard. And this chick is from Ohio. Alright, back to the news. But to basically summarize the 20 minute interview, we have a tweet thread from CN Schedules. Amy Friedman, head of the kids and family programming at Warner Bros, on expanding CN beyond the boys 6 to 11 position it had in the past. We're trying to take that DNA that is so beautiful about Cartoon Network and turn it into a fully fledged family offering. Girls often graduate out of animation. Some of our most incredible competitors have been at the live action game for a long time. We know what girls want. Expect single cam and multi cam comedies and dramas. We're trying to make sure that H HBO Max is a place where girls find themselves, with live action movies shorter than an hour, or schmovies, as she says, like the recently picked up American Girl specials, as well as the new shows like Degrassi, inviting an audience in and giving them beautiful, meaningful, educational, visually stunning musical fare is really important to the business, but it's also important for the creative community. Our studios know the rules, they know how to break the rules, they reinvent it because all the libraries are so deep that you can do the metaverse, you don't have to stick to every single rule rule, so the metaverse is alive and breathing at our studios. There's an acronym that we use at Warner Bros. Discovery, History, Unity, Modernity. It is what we're banking on to win. So yeah, that was a big mouthful. And what did that big mouthful basically say? Uh, it's basically saying that Warner Bros. exec don't really believe in the cartoons that they're making nowadays, and that's something I would actually agree with them on. But their solution, instead of making good cartoon shows, is that they think that they have to go live action in order to retain hits. So yeah, I do have 
have a couple thoughts on this. Cartoon Network is on fucking life support if that is their plan, right? Let's be real here, right? Cartoon Network going live action can go one of two ways. Either they hire a Dan Schneider to produce all the shows, or two, they hire a Don Ming. And if you don't know who that guy is, well, to summarize, there will be a couple good shows, and then the rest will be horseshit. Secondly, Cartoon Network. Cartoon Network. And thirdly, if Cartoon Network really wants to save themselves, here's what they do. They go back to what made it awesome. Some of the best shows on Cartoon Network, they had a world that they wanted to live in, right? Shows like Flapjack, We Bear Bears, Steven Universe. Whether you dislike or like these shows, you have to admit that there is a world that is living and breathing within these shows. You know, shit with character development and an overarching plot even if the show itself is episodic. Basically, if you want to save Cartoon Network, you have to stop treating the viewers like they're fucking vegetables that just got flashbanged. They're five years old, not brain dead. And maybe, just maybe, they can stop snorting Cal Art students like they're pure Colombian. And next up in the news, we actually have Chillin' Dude. If you guys don't know, Chillin' Dude, or just Chillin', is a Smash Bros player. Going back all the way to my childhood, because he was back in the day playing Melee, playing Fox, playing against uh, Hungry Box, Leffen, all those people. This guy really made my childhood interesting, right? But recently, Chillin' Dude had suffered a stroke due to an infection which spread to his heart, and his brother has made a GoFundMe to, of course, cover the medical costs because America. Now, looking at the GoFundMe right now, they're currently at $230,000 out of the needed $400,000. Now, to anybody outside of America, that might sound like, you know, fucking insane, but to any American, that's just par for the course if you don't have the right insurance. And of course, I'm going to be leaving a link to this GoFundMe down in the description below. If you have any money you can donate, definitely go do that. But in the GoFundMe, they actually list off a little bit more information about what happened to Chillin' Dude. On June 3rd, 2022, my family was concerned because he was not answering his phone. We thought he may have been busy with friends or possibly streaming at the time. However, we were worried since it had been a few days and he had not returned any calls. Kashan hadn't been feeling well for a few weeks due to pain in his knee and after making a few calls, we got a hold of his friends locally in Southern California. They found him unresponsive on the floor in his bedroom. Immediately, they contacted the paramedics to take him to the hospital. It turns out his knee had an infection that spread to his heart. The resulting blockage caused a medium-sized stroke which had incapacitated him for a long time before getting any help. Kashan is already on the path to recovery, as his speech and movement have improved substantially in just a few days. However, this will take some time to heal from, but we're hopeful that with proper care, he will make an almost complete recovery. Additionally, the stroke was caused by damage to his heart from an infection, so he will need open-heart surgery next week. Since Kashan's insurance doesn't cover all the surgery and rehabilitation, this will be very expensive. The doctors have been telling us that they may have to send him home early for not presenting with the proper coverage to improve his chances for a full recovery. We've decided to open this GoFundMe, hoping that it will get him the best care possible. Funds in this campaign will strictly go to Kashan's recovery and health, and any contributions will be greatly appreciated. Please keep Kashan in your prayers. Thank you all for any help that you can offer. Now, I know it might be a little bit distasteful to say this right now, but remember how Tyler Ninja Blevins had something cooking for the Smash Bros community? Well, it actually turned Turns out he made good on that word because he donated $25,000 to the campaign, with Ludwig not being far behind with another 10 k And when it comes to situations like these ones, I obviously feel like Chillin' Dude has a bit more time on Earth, you know? Like, I believe that he will fully survive the surgery and will make a full recovery. Like, I highly doubt that this is the last that we ever see from Chillin'. This isn't the end, bro. And lastly, before I end off the video, I want to talk about something a little bit less emotional. So let's talk about Ezra Miller, am I right? Now, as most people know, Ezra Miller for the past couple years has been playing the role as The Flash in various DCU projects. But I swear to God, somebody at Warner Bros must have like the worst fucking decisions ever. Like Amber Heard, Jared Leto, and now Ezra Miller. Like they've all been in the hot seat and Ezra Miller has been in the hot seat for fucking years. The first few times the law got up to their ass, it was for pretty tame reasons, right? Marijuana possession, he choked a woman in 2020 in Iceland in March of 20. 22, he caught two separate cases because he was arrested for disorderly conduct at a Hawaiian bar and also received a restraining order from another couple he robbed right before he got arrested for disorderly conduct. <laughs> 
In April, he was arrested for second degree assault after whipping the fuck out of a chair and it just hit a woman. And now after a month of the dickhead laying low, he now has fucking grooming allegations against him. Like most trash fires, this starts with TMZ. And I'll say this now for people who are not familiar with Native American names. What I'm saying is that sometimes a Native American last name can be a little bit confusing to a non-native. So when I say names like Jumping Eagle and Iron Eyes, those are not insults or jokes at all. Those are their actual last names. But yeah, to continue, a father by the name of Chase Iron Eyes has claimed that Ezra Miller was grooming their 18-year-old daughter, Tokata Iron Eyes, since 2016 when she was only 12. Last week, Iron Eyes went to the Standing Rock Sioux Tribal Court, accusing Miller of using drugs, violence, and intimidation to control and manipulate her, where Miller attempted to share a bed with Iron Eyes, who was 14 at the time. A judge has since approved the order, but law enforcement has not been able to locate Miller to serve them documents. So yeah, homie just fucking dipped. And I mean, to be entirely fair, Ezra does have the speed force, so <laughs> come on, what were you guys thinking really? And if you're wondering what the fuck WB was snorting at the time, according to a Variety report, they just really hope that this motherfucker doesn't like go to jail until after they release the movie and everything, because money, you know? And one of the weird things to note with this whole situation is that Tokata herself claims to be in no real danger. I'd like to make a statement to acknowledge the tragedy that is the narrative of the general public and the assumptions made on the behalf of my family and friends regarding my stability and otherwise. I dropped out of Bard five months ago, with my friend and comrade William passed away shortly thereafter. My mind was incredibly impacted and I've needed space for some time in processing of grief. My comrade Ezra Miller, for the entirety of the aforementioned era, has only provided loving support and invaluable protection throughout this period of loss. I am in no way, or under any circumstance, have ever been during my short-lived adulthood in need of a conservatorship. My father and his allegations hold no weight and are frankly transphobic and are based in the notion that I am somehow incapable of coherent thought or opposing opinions to those of my own, kindred worrying about my well-being. I am now aware of the severity of the emotional and psychological manipulation I was made to endure while I am my parents' home. I am an adult and I deserve to feel authority in my own body. I am tired of wondering whether cops will show up to section me on a daily basis. I have decided upon a therapist and I'm excited to now engage in a conversation with my mental health professional about my anxiety and probable depression. It is no one's business. My choices are my own and as to the nature of police intervention in my case, it is unnecessary and a waste of time and resource. This bout of blatant betrayal and toxicity my parents and others have chosen to punish me with has been desperately embarrassing and traumatically life-altering. Relationships in my life have been grossly affected, some detrimentally so. This behavior is unacceptable and needs to be called out. I'm going to be real blunt here. It sounds like there was a fucking gun at the back of her head while she typed that. I have no idea where the notion that Chase having a concern about the relationship between a 12 and 23 year old is somehow transphobic. It just seems like poor deflection. And I'm all for doing whatever the fuck you want as long as you're a legal adult and as long as you don't hurt anybody. But dog, come on. Like, you're a victim, let's not sugarcoat that shit, right? But also keep in mind during all of this that Chase Iron Eyes claims that Ezra has possession of a lot of Tokata's personal properties, things like her phone, her bank cards, and her driver's license, and honestly, I'm inclined to believe Jumping Horse and Iron Eyes, given that the evidence will eventually have to be shown to a judge and whatnot. Like, Jumping Horse and Iron Eyes have signed affidavits on this shit, right? And no real legal authority in America will grant a restraining order without a good deal of evidence or probable cause. And now, of course, I'm no fucking lawyer. We're also dealing with tribal laws, a non-native accuser, the kid's now an adult. I have no fucking clue where this could go, right? And that's where we land here today. As of June 10th, it's been alleged that Ezra took this person across state lines, even to Hawaii, allegedly beat her and has her social media under wraps. And the Standing Rock Sioux Tribunal Court actually granted the restraining order against Ezra, requiring the speedster to not be within 100 meters of the family. And to cease any and all contact. And, uh... Here's the funny thing about giving the Flash a restraining order. Nobody knows where the fuck he is. Like, this motherfucker could be anywhere right now. But given what he's being accused of today, I can only imagine that he's just trying to necromance Epstein's corpse just to try to get back on that island, right? But to wrap up the story for today, the courts have ordered a hearing for July 12th. This is also a necessary part of making the protective orders stick to Ezra. But in all reality, that's all what I had for today. But if you're into this type of stuff, make sure to slap a like on it. Subscribe to stay tuned on all the wacky you should I'll do here next. And lastly, make sure to drop by the Twitter and TikTok for more of me. With that being said, guys, I'm Sleechy, going to fuck to sleep.